a span of this, man. I can't believe we're making time for this, guys. We made it. We made it. We're in the great outdoors. Now I want to say thank you. Yes, buddy. It's great to see you here, man. 100%. Hallie, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So glad to see you. Ben? Yeah, ben dude. 100%. Ben. Yeah, respect. 100%. Great to be here. Bro, thanks for making time, man. That's yeah, great to see you guys here. Dude, yeah. it's an honor. We're going to talk about so much cool stuff. We're going to bring such a good vibe, I think, which is a much needed message back home. Um, for, for those in our audience that just don't know who you are for one reason or another, can we please get a quick intro? Nat Pennington, Humboldt Seed Company. I'm Hallie Pennington with Humboldt Seed Company, Nat's yeah. daughter. <laughs> I'm Benjamin Lin, uh, Chief Science Officer for Humboldt Seed Company. Dope, man, dope. And Nat, man, please kick it off with like how your experience has been here at Spanibus, dude. Well, this is the second time I've been to Spanibus, and this year it's, you know, amazing because I think we're finally seeing you know, people are back to normal after the pandemic, and so it's great, and it's it's huge. I mean, there's so many people here this year, so the energy is really good, really good. Dope, Hallie. Yeah, I mean, it's been an amazing trip this time. We got so lucky with the weather. I think, like the attendance, everyone's just so positive, and I mean, it's incredible for me to just see Europe here welcoming us with open arms again. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it's great. This is uh, like my fourth or fifth span of this year, and it's great to finally, you know, we have a booth here. This is our second year here with a booth, so that's been a long time coming. And it's great to have the, such a positive response from the European community. It seems to be a, like a huge value placed on California, and people are really eager to know, you know what's happening. What's happening in California? What's it like out there is the, main, the biggest question we get here. How would you describe the culture here, the cannabis culture here in Barcelona? I mean, it's it's kind of like ten years. It's like ten years ago in Cali. It's like with the social clubs, like you can go somewhere, you can buy some weed, you can sit down with your homies, twist it up, and you can smoke and like play video games, have a beer, do whatever. So it's like the good old days, like you know, Prop 215 days, when you could go to the club, buy some herb, twist it up, chill with your homies. Do you have a favorite club that you've been to? Uh, probably one of my favorites. The for vibe is one of just because it's super, just like chill. Like they got some like video games. They got this is a nice bar. It's just a great place to go hang out and smoke with your friends. Dope, bro. Dope. Thank you for that, Hallie. Oh, excuse yeah. me. How would you describe the cannabis culture out here in Barcelona? I mean, I think it's honestly very diverse. Like, there's definitely a lot of different crowds. There's definitely interest in, like, you know, the California cannabis culture. And then there's, you know, all these kind of old school folks that, you know, are coming up asking for some of our classic strains. So it's actually, I like it, though. It's nice to have, like, such a, you know, interesting, diverse crowd of people. That's what we try to provide our menu towards is, you know, a little bit of everything for everyone. Absolutely, Hallie. And do you have a favorite social club that you've been to? I'm going to have to say 1UP would probably be the one to go to, too. I know that they have a little bit of our uh, genetics there right now in stock, so that is a, you know, definitely an advantage in my mind as well. Yeah, blueberry cupcake. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, and, yeah, yeah, I want to talk about so much, dude. Um, how would you describe the culture here, bro? You know, it's, like, I think, like Ben said, I, but one thing is it's they've kept it small and they've kind of not allowed for legalization to bring in a bunch of money hungry you know mega corporate types and so there's a whole bunch of small business you look around you see so many different little businesses whether it's you know making pipes or hash or ancillary growers all of it and i love that because you know in california it felt like you know, it was really, or it's been really hard for the smaller people, and, it, and I don't like to see that at all. So it's, I hope that they stay the course and keep it that way over here in the EU as they obviously move towards making it more legal, but small. Legal and let the small businesses survive at least, hopefully thrive. 100%, and on that note, Nat, you know, what can we learn from European cannabis culture in general, do you think? As Americans? That's a great question. I mean, I know, you know, if I may, we want to have access. I, I, I'm sure that there's a desire to have more accessibility of, for cannabis for the uh, everyday person. But at the same time, I love the, uh, you know, the culture that has developed here. Um, and I, you know, I love the global unity that you feel here like they there's certainly like 
they're trying hard to bring all the countries, you know, the U.S., Europe. We've met lots of people from Africa and Australia and Asia. It's just everybody's coming together here. So I love that about Spanibus, and I love that about the European cannabis community. Absolutely, Nat. Thank you. And all I was saying is, like, I think myself included, bro, before I even came out here, up until the day I got here, I was, like, really consumed as a Californian thinking, like, everything revolves around us, you know? Yeah. Um, so you're more than willing to take, uh, I guess you should go first and tell going to take your bong hit. Um, what do you think we as Americans can learn from European cannabis culture? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, here, you have such a great history. different types of hash, everything from the dry sip, like old school Moroccan style, to all like the new resins and rosins coming out. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of that technology. There's a whole different like flavor profile going on here. Like in Cali, we really got, you know, we got our exotics, we got our real gases and creams and fruits. Here you see something totally different. You see a lot of like hazes and like, just like old school funks that are, I wouldn't really describe as gassy. So, like I think learning more about the plant is like we like we have a lot to share as a global community about like all our different appreciations for the plant and why you know people from South Africa their appreciation of cannabis can be drastically different than you know ours from Cali so that cross pollination of knowledge that's awesome bro thank you Cali um yeah I mean honestly I've learned quite a lot just from the people here and like the industry as a whole I think one of the main things that I really appreciate is like their ability to kind of you know just take things a little bit slower and steadier instead of always being so volatile and fast paced and almost like you know chasing after the next big hype thing uh they you know they kind of almost stick to what they know a little bit more and I find that like you know being able to like enjoy and just you know slowly go through the day smoking and like you know maybe not so much chasing those like brand new strains all the time as breeders like you know we can still enjoy our good old blueberry muffin out here and it's like you know nobody's gonna question that that's for sure thank you Hallie yo and I think like as an example the humble name carries so much weight with it and I think back home we forget that sometimes so how is the energy when people come to the to the booth bro you know I I think one thing that's crazy <laughs> is that, uh, you know, California really is one of the places that's got this open, you know, visible industry that is acres of, of plants and beautiful fields of it. You can walk through fields and it's, you know, all trellis perfectly. And when people see that on some of our videos and they see, the genetics growing in the field they're like this is amazing i can't imagine seeing that so i mean we hear a lot about like we want to come visit can we come visit and of course we've got like our, our california cannabis tours and the humble cannabis tours that people can go and, and if they want to experience it all and so it, i think that that's been interesting to see that just Europe's yet to get to that point, and maybe that's a good thing. But I'd like to see some more outdoor grows yeah. in Spain and other places too. Dope, dope, Nat. Yeah. Uh, Hallie, how's the energy been for you? Like when people come to the booth? I mean, it's been great, honestly. Like I said, we feel really honored to have been welcomed to the market with like such open arms, and you know, seeing and having people come up to the booth with our genetics and they've grown them in places that like, you know, I've never even imagined going to in my lifetime. And it's just the incredible, you know, the ability, the way that the seed has, you know, it's, it's opportunity to travel. And, you know, the people who are getting to enjoy and use this medicine like all over Europe now, I mean, couldn't be better than that. Thank you, Hallie, thank you. And my bro, in terms of business, you know, like what you're seeing, um, how, how's the demand been for, for the brand, you know what I'm saying? It's been huge. It's been, I mean, folks here, like California, where you have a totally different palette of, of flavors and terps going on and kind of this like, kind of really cutting edge approach to genetics and a lot of the work that we've been doing and, uh, with different universities and uh, different groups really diving into you know, what the differences of cannabis are and what makes it special. And then bringing that over here, people, people are stoked. People are 
stoked for all the new flavors, all the new aromas, all the new structures. Because um, the home grow community over here is huge. It's all small cultivators. Like over here, it's like you know, four or five lights in a bedroom is equivalent to 200 lights in California, as far as how what, what, how big of a grow that's considered. And is there a particular strain that people are asking by name? You know, that's like outpacing the others, perhaps. I'm, I'm proud to say that I've smoked blueberry muffin on it every continent except for one so far. It's a cultural <laughs> phenomenon. It's, it's cultural it's literally phenomenon, every... Ned. Did you hear that? Blueberry muffin is <laughs> all over the place. I think a lot of people breed with it, too. That makes us happy. You know, people say it's really easy to grow, so that's nice to hear. We want people to be able to grow their own. <laughs> And what do you see in terms of like the difference in the demand between the American market and the European market? Well, I'll tell you, people love seeds. They love the, you know, getting genetics that are fresh and clean, which you know you, you get that from seed a lot of the time, all, all the time, pretty much. And it's just like a great community that thrives on its seeds. And not as much love. You know, it's kind of interesting. But it's cool because we really love seeds too. We love growing <laughs> seed. And <laughs> not that we don't like clones. We do a lot of work with clones. But it's just like Europe is all about seeds and, and diversity. And that's amazing. We love it. You know what I enjoy about Humble Seed Company as well? Is that you guys collaborate back home with various companies. And when you're out here at Spanibus, do you establish relationships with uh, European companies exploring cool stuff well oh yeah the yeah. yeah, other collaboration it's uh it's funny yeah it's funny you ask because yeah. so this year uh, i'm a we, mind reader <laughs> uh apparently maybe somebody told you something no no <laughs> um so yeah this year uh it's fan of it's uh we released a collaboration project we did with uh sensi seeds so sensi seeds was originally the seed bank which was one of if not the original yeah. kind of a seed distributor in the world um, and for better or worse, that's what really paved the way for that every... That must feel every, good for, for Elbow Seed Company, huh? Well, it feels natural. We're like really, you know, it's a lot of like-minded things. And we just respect that kind of longevity. They've been really, you know, and influential. The, the focus they've always focused on, keeping the plant first and keeping everything else second. So we've got mad respect for just uh, keeping that... The, that stewardship to the plant going, like the, like I was able to uh, visit their breeding facility and just their their seed vault. Like we have we have a seed vault. They have like an iron box that is like a legitimate bank vault. Um, and the strains that they have going on in there are stuff you know way back. Like I mean, they have stuff fifties, forties, thirties, like wild like yeah stuff that botanists went around and collected uh, from the. Uh, Russian government, I think, is the, what they actually inherited. Uh, Hallie, anything you can add about the relationships that uh, the brand is building with Sentences? I mean, yeah, we're we're feeling very, very fortunate to get to know them a little bit better over this, you know, course of building a new collaboration. And uh, honestly, so honored that we're going to get a chance to go hang out with them in Amsterdam and, you know, spend a little time in that seed bowl of theirs, hopefully. <laughs> So yeah, you can have yeah, no, we're pumped, and we can't wait till they come over here in the summertime and uh, hang out with us in Humboldt and explore California. Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's perfect. It's a great matchup and history and just exciting new ventures and adventures. <laughs> Another observation, guys, is in the European market, a lot of seed companies as well, being born in the 80s, have seen a nice career span. And a lot of guys like Simon at Sirius Seeds, he's on the latter end of his career. He's dedicated his life to producing a handful of awesome strains like the White Russian or, you know, the AK-47 as an example. And I think, like, we're so young in that context as, a, as an American industry. At the same time, we got anomalies like Humble Seed Company that have been moving and grooving for a while. And so, do you have any response to what I'm, I'm talking about? No, that's, that's uh, awesome. That's really nice of, for you to put us in that context. I mean, we've been preserving stuff in 
at least in Humboldt since the late 90s. But yeah, these guys have a good over 10 years ahead of us doing all the amazing work they've been doing. So it's Europe versus the, the you know new world. I mean, it's Europe is just so full of history and so Sensi Seeds is like the real OGs of that. <laughs> they, they put the cannabis and hemp museums together, which I thought was just a testament to where their values are. Well, excuse me, not just that, but the thought that I had was that they're like the old guard. They're like the OGs, oh, yeah. and then they selected Humble Seed Company to carry the torch. And I think it's beautiful to see the old school mix, you know, yeah. come with the new school and, and carry it forward into the next 2030s and 2040s. That's badass. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, so being, being a Humble Seed Company, from your perspective as freaking professionals, man, like, where do you see our industry going? You know what I'm saying? Like, this next five years. On a global scale. Well, I sure hope that there's like just more access for more people to the plan across the globe. And you can't be at a place like this and not be thinking about, you know, the whole cannabis prohibition falling all over the world may happen in our lifetime. You never know. So uh, the United States needs to freaking make a, you know, I mean, we need to legalize there. We need here and, and then the other thought is don't overtax and keep the regulations make it accessible for the everyday person. <laughs> yeah. My two cents. 100%. On a global scale, uh, what would you like to see? What do you think is going to happen in our industry? Kelly? I mean, I would just like to continue to see a lot more, you know, unification between different areas like we kind of have been seeing. Like, you know, we, we're starting to make a lot of connections in new places and, you know, whether or not right now we're just doing it through seed imports, which are, you know, maybe a tiny bit teasiest at this point. It's good that we're starting to, you know, really get into that, like, side of things and, you know, starting to have a presence and, you know, unify with all of these areas. And I think California being like one of the like original kind of influential places to really start getting into cannabis. Uh, everywhere we go, everyone is just very enthusiastic to be able to have access to those genetics. And honestly, there's no better feeling than that for us. So. I've noticed that too. I've totally noticed that too. Thank you, Hallie. My bro? What was the question? Uh, in the next five years or so, you know, where do you think the global industry is going to go? Oh man, if, I, if you would have asked me five years ago, I would have never get, I would have never guessed we're at yeah. where we are now. So I can't even begin to fathom where it would be Good in five point. years. I mean, we're seeing like all these, we're seeing a lot of big pharmaceutical companies coming in, a lot of big ag players coming in, but we also are seeing this huge research and so the culture of like people at home growing with access to the plant um, in places all over the world because you know in Germany, Germany is hopefully thinking it seems like maybe they're going to allow home growth for the first time so you're talking about you know repression of a plant beyond anything that we even in the United States can imagine because in Germany you just you couldn't grow it like you would be put in jail for forever and ever and ever and for one plant for having a couple of seeds. Um, so seeing those kind of markets open up, it's gonna be it's gonna be really beautiful to see. It's gonna be people with, like first experience ever growing cannabis in their backyard and being able to smoke it or find you know find their rhythm with the plants. And speaking of rhythm, you know, I think the three of you are a great trio to ask this question to. We, are, we have a global audience for GW Smoke Break, and definitely after Spanibus, we gave out about 300 sticker packs. And so, to our European audience and our global audience, what do you think it's important to know about American operators, or, you know what I'm saying, like, American cannabis culture, where, you know what I'm saying, I think, I think there's maybe some stigma, or just like, as Americans, like, you know, what do you want the world to know about, about us, as American weed people? Oh, man. Oh, we're, <laughs> we're trying our best to keep it real and grassrootsy, and this, you know, event is a lot, a lot of that vibe, so that's good. Still a lot of access. Um, and I don't know, don't trust the Americans. No. <laughs> yeah, dude. But no, we're, we 
don't know everything. Yeah, I'm kind of glad you said that. It's real. Keep it the way you are. You have kind of a bliss right now. It's actually a good time in Europe. So be careful how fast you move. That would be the same thing these guys kind of said. I think... Don't don't take it for granted when you kind of have a sweet spot with legalization. Well said, man. Well said. Um, Hallie, what does the world need to know about us American weed people? I think that there's like, you know... uh, Sorry, can you actually repeat it one more time? Yeah, I'm really yeah, stoked. What did we just smoke? That was great. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Arms, man, you brought it over. Um, uh, right on, that's what it is. What do you think the world needs to know about us American weed people, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would just I would just think that, it, you know, as much as we are such an influence on, like, the global market, I think that people should also know that sometimes when it's such a new and emerging situation that it kind of draws in some unauthentic energy and there's a lot of people maybe pushing things that aren't necessarily like you know the original culture of California cannabis and you know we're still kind of adjusting to things but I just think you know people should you know take take everything in this industry and really like start to learn and look a little bit deeper into things because you know, I'm kind of, I'm just kind of sick of people really just chasing THC every day. I want to, you know, I want to see California and everywhere else that's influenced by us start to look deeper into it a little bit, you know? <laughs> well said, hi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for me, I guess I, I think, the, I mean, the culture out here is absolutely beautiful. And the biggest thing that I think that uh, Europe uh, can learn from uh, California to know about us in California and the U.S. mainly goes out to the regulators. Like, please pay attention to what the regulators have been doing in other areas and what's worked and what hasn't worked. I feel like California in general is a great kind of litmus test for what the you know legalization experiment has been. And you know we've seen you know large scale operators come rushing in and grow you know more weed than the market can consume. And we've seen heritage farms that have survived because they're still producing the quality. So just like keeping the craft cannabis alive is, is so important for everywhere. Well said, bro. Well said. Hey, last question. I promise, and we're out of here. Uh, should, should Americans come out to cannabis next year? Our homies, everybody Fuck in the yeah. community. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. we were talking about that earlier. Definitely, this event is a really refreshing, um, you know, trip for any. I would recommend it for California companies that have been through it the last two or three years. It's like sort of re- reinvigorates your hope for the uh, future of cannabis. Thank you, Ned. Thank you. Allie? Yeah, I mean, I, we're just so thankful to be here, and uh, honestly, I can't even imagine like what I would say if I told my 10-year-old self that we would be doing this right now. So, I mean, everyone should come out here and experience it for themselves. It's really just mind-blowing to see. Awesome. Thank you so much, Allie. My bro? Uh, still the good old days out here. Yeah. yeah. It's still, it's that, it's that horizon line right before the legalization. It's surreal. It's like going back in time, but just like by 10 years and seeing this, this you know, thriving economy that's going on out here. Thank you so much, man. Respect. Thank you, Hallie. Thank you.